So, hello everyone and welcome to this next lecture in the DC to DC converter lecture series. So, in the previous lecture, I had set up the simulation for the buck boost converter. Now, in this lecture, I am going to actually simulate the circuit and analyze the waveforms. So, as before, before we start off with this lecture, a little bit of background is that if you are interested in these kind of video lectures, but you find them a little too light and you want something more comprehensive, I have an online course on Udemy on simulating power electronic circuits using Python and this takes you through the entire process of installing softwares, how to use the software and also an example of simulating a buck converter. So, if you have, if you want something more comprehensive, this is an option. The link to this course is provided in the description for this video and at the same time, if you are, if you do are interested in this topic and you do not have the time to follow along with the lectures, you can download the simulation files that I talk, that I use in these uh, tutorials and these are provided in this link and is available at Gumroad. The link for this, the, the link for this website is also provided in the description for this video. So, check out these two if you are interested. So, I will now continue with the lecture. So, in the previous lecture, this is what we had done. We had added the buck boost converter. So, let me just go and show you the circuit. This is the circuit of the buck boost converter. And we had created a new folder for the buck boost converter and we had added this circuit. So, let us just click on process circuit schematics again just to make sure that we do not have any errors and we do not. So, now that this is done, let us go back and look at the circuit parameters. Now, as far as I know, I did edit the circuit parameters and they do seem like they have been edited. So, we do not need to look at it again. So, for example, these are all updated. Now, what we will do is we will get started with the control. So, as I already said before and this is something which is applicable to most converters, again I won't make a blanket statement here, but this is applicable to most converters is that when you have just one switch like this, it is usually okay that you can apply some kind of a PWM signal and observe the waveforms to begin with. So, that is something that we will do in this lecture. What we will do is we will give a constant duty cycle. PWM signal. So, which means there is a pulse of a certain constant width to the switch S. So, that when the switch is turned on, this inductor will charge and later when the switch is turned off, the inductor will free wheel through the capacitor. So, this is enough for us to be able to analyze some waveforms. So, let us do that in this lecture. So, let me go back and actually let me go to my editor and I have two folders here, buck converter and boost converter. Now, in both of them, there was the file gate signal.py and this is where I was doing the PWM, the pulse width modulation. So, the first thing I need to do is I need to add my buck boost converter. So, you can go to project folders, click, click add project folder and I shall just go to my documents and here choose the buck boost converter. So, now I have this new converter or new folder which is added. Now, all I have to do is I need to go and copy my file from either one of these two buck converter or boost converter. Let us click on boost converter. I just have to click on gate signal.py and gate signal descriptor.csv. So, gate signal.py is the actual python file that has the control code and gate signal underscore desk.csv is the descriptor for this particular control file. So, let me go click on it or rather copy it and paste these two into my buck boost converter. So, the first thing I need to do is I need to add this file to my for or to the simulation. So, let me go and click on get signal dot pi and let us just click PWM. That is good enough for now. You can add any more description you want, that is not a problem. Now that we have added it, let us go to configure control. Now, when you first add a control file, the description will be empty. So, the variables are all empty, but as I said before, you can always upload a descriptor. So, for example, this descriptor is for a control file that has an output as a switch signal and the rest are just internal control variables. So, a file like this is very easily transferable, right. So, that is what we are going to do, we are going to upload this file. So, let me go back to my simulation, choose the file, make sure I am in buck boost converter, click on gate signal underscore desk dot csv and click open. It is not sufficient because this has been only chosen. You must upload the file 
and now the file has been uploaded and you can see the variables now appear. So let's just go through it once. It's pretty standard. The control outputs are switch S1 and this control name is S1 gate and there are no control inputs because I'm not doing any closed loop feedback control yet. Stat static variables, there is only one which is a carrier signal and the time event variables are is T1 because I need one time event at least and the variable storage elements are the modulation signal, the carrier signal and the gate signal. All right. So now that we have this, let's go back to the editor and click on gate signal.py. Now in gate signal.py, there is one line that we need to edit. Now this line we need to edit because we have copied this file from the Bose converter simulation and there we were assigning the modulation signal or the duty ratio rather to the model the signal that is generated by the open loop control where I was gradually increasing the modulation signal from 0 to a certain value. Now this does not exist yet. So if I run this simulation it will give me a syntax error right. So actually I could show you that syntax error let us do that. So let us go back to the simulation go back to the main page view output and let us click on run. This will not run. This is an error but I will show you what the error is anyway. So let me click on it and to know the error always go to the command line and here you see there is an error right. This means there is an error and it tells you exactly what it is. Trace back there is an error name error finally name error and it says in this statement modulation signal is equal to control signal dot pi all right it tells you exactly where it is this open control modulation signal is not defined right and that's perfectly normal that's a good that is there is nothing unexpected about this error we haven't defined it and python is complaining because you are trying to access a variable that you have not yet defined or not even created so we need to comment this line and we will comment the previous line right so now let's go back and run the simulation again Let's go back to the command line and you see this time the simulation is running. There is no error message. So now we are good to go. So now that we are here, let's start plotting variables. So let's plot all the currents. We plot the, um, the current in the input, the current in the inductor, the current in the diode, the current in the capacitor and, and the load current. Let's plot all these currents. So let's start with the plot. Let's call this input current. I already have it saved. Choose the correct ammeter. It is ammeter in. If you are not sure, just go back to the uh, circuit, circuit schematic. And I will call this in. Save the waveform. Done. Add another plot. Call this uh, inductor current. Start the plot choose ammeter underscore L1, call this IL, let's give it capital IL, save the waveform, make sure you save the waveform and make sure it appears here in the list and then click on done, add another plot, call this diode current, start the plot, choose ammeter D1, call this ID, save it. Make sure it appears here and then click on done. Add another plot, call it capacitor current. Start the plot and it's already saved so we don't need to make any changes. Save the waveform and click on done. And the last is the load current. Start the plot choose ammeter load and click on I load. Save it and done. Now that we have done all these, we need a voltage. So let us go the most usual suspect for the voltage is of course the output voltage. So let us go and plot that. Let us create a plot and call it output. It is already saved. Very nice. Output voltage plot. And it's volt meter VO, we call this VO. Save the waveform, click on done. So now that we have all these plots, let's get started by plotting the output voltage. And 
and let's go back to the file browser and we see an output voltage. So let me click on it. Now, as I said before, it's a very interesting plot because you see it's negative. And as I said, this is not a bug, right? This is not a bug because this is how the bug boost converter is, right? The bug boost converter will always generate a negative voltage, which is what I said. The reason is when the switch is turned on, the inductor charges, the current flows in a clockwise direction. When the switch is turned off, the inductor will freewheel, but the current through the inductor cannot reverse. It will continue to flow downwards, right? It cannot flow in the clockwise direction because the switch is open. But the current through the diode, current through the inductor rather, will continue to flow in the downward direction. And it will freewheel through the diode, which means the current will flow in the counterclockwise direction, all right? And if it flows in the counterclockwise direction in the capacitor, it is flowing in the upward direction, which means the lower terminal of the capacitor is positive with respect to the upper terminal. Now, in the voltmeter, let's go back and check our simulation. Edit circuit parameters, go to view components. I guess my simulator is just busy and let's go all the way to the voltmeter and you see the voltmeter is at position 8s all right is at position 8s and the positive polarity is at 7s which means the voltmeter is still trying to measure a voltage which is positive with the upper terminal and sometimes that's okay right because we do we do not change the voltage parameter the voltage because sometimes we do want a negative voltage. We do want a negative voltage because the load is such. So the result is you are now getting a negative voltage at the output and that is expected. Right? Now the next question to ask is what is the value? The value is the input voltage is 12 volts and we have chosen a duty ratio of 0.3. So let's go and calculate what we expect. Okay. Now, in a buck, buck boost converter, the output voltage is considered to be the input voltage multiplied by the duty ratio divided by 1 minus the duty ratio. Okay. That is V in into D divided by 1 by D. This is the formula for a buck, converter, buck boost converter. And you see the output is 5.14. Of course, it's a negative because I'm not considering the negative sign, but it is 5.14, which means it's approximately 5 volts. And if you come here, we are seeing 5 volts. So we are getting the correct output. Now that we have this, let me just delete this and let me go back rather to my simulator and let me plot some more waveforms. So now that we have this, let's go back to the view output. Let's look at the inductor current All right? or let's look at the input current. So let's plot this input current first. It's always good to just plot the entire current so that at least you know if you want to zoom in what part is most interesting because there is always some amount of transient and it's always better to plot the whole thing before you actually zoom in. And now I see an input current. So it seems fairly steady after this. So let's just choose a range after 0.4. So let's say 0.4 to 0 0.401, 0 0.4 to 0.401 and let me plot this. Plot should be done. Let me go to my file browser. Okay, I have the input current. Let me plot it again. So this is my input current. So as you can see, it's pretty obvious here what's happening. When the switch is turned on somewhere at this point, the current through the input increases. So let's go to the circuit and see what's happening. When the switch is turned on, the current in the ammeter that is measured by this ammeter is increasing and that's only obvious because the voltage source is charging the inductor. The current through this inductor, which is also the current in the ammeter ion, is charging during this time. All right. So, and as you can see, because we've chosen a duty ratio of 0.3, this 
increase happens only for a small duration. See, this is the entire time period starting from here when it starts increasing to the next cycle. So it is on only for a short period of time. The rest of the time the switch is turned off. All right. Let me go back and let me now plot the inductor current and let me plot it for the same range. And let me go to the file browser and let me click on it. So here again, now you see the inductor current, however, never goes to zero and that's only expected because as I said, when the switch is turned on, the current through the inductor will rise because the current is now, it is now being charged by the voltage source. When the switch is turned off, the inductor current now free wheels through the diode. So it starts to fall because it's now charging the capacitor. So this is only expected. Let me go back and plot the diode current for the same range. And in the end, we're going to plot all these three and compare them. This is the diode current. And as you can see, the diode current is exactly the opposite of the switch current. The switch is turned on for a short period of time. The diode is actually conducting for a large period of time. The diode is conducting when the switch is not conducting. All right. The switch, because when the inductor current now is charging the capacitor and is decreasing, it is freewheeling through the diode and that's what's happening here. Now, let's do this clarification by plotting all three. Let's create another plot and let's call this input and inductor and diode. I mean, you can think of a more imaginative name. I, I'm not particularly good at naming and let's add all of them. So we call this ammeter I in, call this in, make sure you save the waveform and make sure it appears here, particularly in multi-plot, multi-plot waveforms, call it I L, save the waveform and the last is D1, call it I T, save the waveform. And before you click on done, always make sure that you have seen, you are now seeing all three waveforms in the plot. That is input, current through the inductor and the diode. Then you can click on done. Now that we have this, let's go all the way to the bottom and let's plot this for the same range. I guess my computer is a little busy, it's been on for a while and here this is the plot. So probably too many colors but anyway, so it's quite obvious here. Let's look at the blue current here which is actually not even visible but what is visible is the orange current and the green current. The reason is because the blue current is completely superimposed, right? But what is important is that the input current and the inductor current are similar in some parts of time, right? So for example, this orange current is the inductor current. When the inductor current is rising, this is when the switch is turned on. And at that time, the, in, uh, the green current, which is the diode current is zero, all right? At this time, the blue current should also be at the same level. The reason is because the blue current is also rising. Now, when the switch is turned off, the orange disappears. The reason is because now the orange is superimposed or rather it's the diode current that now flows. And here the input current is zero. You can see there is a blue line here. So this blue line indicates that the input current is zero because the switch is turned off, right? The input current and the switch current are the same. Whereas the diode current now superimposes the orange line. I would suggest, and this is an exercise that I will leave to you, repeat the same plots, but in this case, give them a slightly different scaling factor. If you give them a slightly different scaling factor, you'll be able to see the three plots in distinctly, but you'll still be able to see them superimposed 
one over the other but you'll be able to see them distinctly i would leave this to you as an exercise but this shows to you clearly how the current moves from one device to the other it is now first moving through the input branch which is which is what which is the same as the switch current and then it transfers to the diode current when it is freewheeling through the capacitor this is the inductor current all right now that we have this let's stop the simulation once and let's examine another interesting case and that is let me change the duty ratio we had a duty ratio around 0.3 let's go up and make this 0.7 all right and let me run the simulation again let me click on run always when you run the simulation go to the command line and make sure there are no unexpected errors because any python error will result in error which appears in the command line so for example if suddenly you do a divide by zero something like that will appear in the command line so make sure you check your command line and let's go all the way to the bottom and let's click on the output voltage so the output voltage should now be different and where yeah here is the output voltage and you see it is still negative because it will always be negative but you see the magnitude of the output voltage the input voltage is 12 volts all right we've taken a 12 volt battery but now your output voltage is almost double of that it's minus 25 so let's do a calculation and check if we really are getting the right value well, let me zoom out of this let me go to my excel sheet and let me put in the same value 12 multiplied by 0.7 divided by 1 minus 0.7 multiply this and we are getting 28 all right so what we are getting is 28 volts and what we are seeing here is probably around 26 volts the result is i would suppose there will be some amount of drop because after all we do have resistances we do have the inductor also has a resistance the capacitor has a resistance so it's only normal that we are going to lose some voltage as opposed to what we calculate from this just this formula because there's going to be some drops so with this we have been able to analyze the basic performance of the inductor now i would suggest of course go ahead and play around with it this is sufficient in my opinion to be able to analyze the basic working of a buck post converter because it's most important we have seen how the current transfers from one branch to the other which is the most important whenever you're looking at any dc dc converter so at this point of time i will stop this lecture and in the next lecture as always we will do an open loop control of the buck post converter and just look at one last analysis before we wind up the buck post series so if you have any doubts please do post in the comments or email me or message me whichever is your preference of communication and otherwise i will see you in the next lecture where we will conclude the bug boost converter after which we'll get started with the chuk converter or maybe the sepic converter one of them so thank you thank you for watching and see you soon goodbye for now